Hello children, now we start with the new chapter, lesson 13, direct and inverse proportion. This part is the introduction part and in this part I will be explaining what is meant by direct proportion. We come across many such situations in our day to day life where Variation in one quantity brings in quantity bringing in variation in other quantity. For example, see the cost of one ball is rupees 50. Now when there is a variation in this one ball, it becomes two ball. And there will be variation in price also. It will You will get two balls for 15 rupees, isn't it? So, there is a variation in one quantity means variation in the number of balls that is from one ball it became two ball and it was rupees 15 then the cost price of two balls becomes rupees 30. Let's take another example. A person completing a job. He takes two hours to complete a job. Now, there is a variation in this number of people. If the number of people increases, then the job will be completed in the less time. That means the time decreases. So variation in one quantity leads to decrease in another quantity. Here it was variation that means increase in one quantity led to increase in other quantity also. But here it was opposite. Variation in one quantity, that means if there was an increase in the number of people, then the time would decrease to complete the job. So, there is a change in one quantity which leads to a change in another quantity. And that means that time we use the idea of proportion. Change in one quantity leads to the change in another quantity. Change in the number of balls led to the change in the cost. Change in number of people led to the change in the time. Now let's go to the direct proportion. Now here, cost of one packet of sugar is rupees 50. Then what will be the cost of three packets of sugar? 3 into 15, rupees 45. When it was one packet, the price was 50. When this one packet increased to three packet, the price also increased. So, the increase in one quantity led to the increase in the other quantity. Same thing here. Cost of one dress is rupees 1500. Then what will be the cost of three dresses? Three into 1500, that gives rupees 4500. So increase in one quantity leads to increase in the other quantity. Suppose there were three dresses and the cost was rupees 4500. Then what will be the cost of one dress? One dress was 1500. So if the quantity decreases, cost also decreases. So when one quantity increases, other also increases or when one quantity decreases, other also decreases, that time we use the idea of direct proportion. Now what is that? This is the definition of direct proportion. Two quantities x and y are said to be in direct proportion if they increase or decrease in such a manner that the ratio of their corresponding values remain constant. That means 3 sugar, 3 uh, cost price of 1 packet of sugar is 15 and cost price of 3 packet of sugar rupees 45. So 1 upon that is 1 packet and this is rupees 15 and 3 packet that is 1 upon 3 is equal to 15 upon 45. Is it clear? So once again I explain Two quantities x and y are said to be in direct proportion if they increase or decrease in such a manner that the ratio of their corresponding values remains same. Here also 1 upon 3. 
will be equal to 1500 upon 4500. That will also come to 1 upon 3. So the ratios will remain same. And then X and Y are said to be to vary directly. That means if X increases, Y also increases. If X decreases, Y also decreases. So this is the definition. When two quantities X and Y are said to be in direct proportions if they increase or decrease in such a manner that the ratio of their corresponding values remain constant. Here 1 upon 3 will be equal to 15 upon 45. When you do the cancellation, you will also get 15 upon 45 as 1 upon 3. Same way here, 1 dress upon 3 dresses will be equal to rupees 1500 upon rupees 4500. So, we say that in such cases, if y1 and y2 are the values of y corresponding to the values and the corresponding to the values x1 and x2 of x respectively then x1 upon y1 is equal to x2 upon y2. So we will take this ratio when they are in direct proportion we will write as x1 upon y1 is equal to x2 upon y2. Although variables increasing or decreasing together need not always be in direct proportion. Now for that one example, when you all are growing up, so with the years your age increases. When your age increases, your height and your weight also increases. But after some time, even your age, even though when your age increase, you stop growing after certain years. That is after 22 years, you stop growing in height or you uh, even though your age has increased. So it does not always mean that they will always be in direct proportion. But you should know when two quantities are decreasing in proportion, then they are in direct proportion. You will understand better when we take one example. So let's take one example. If the weight of 12 sheets of thick paper is 40 grams, how many sheets of the same paper would weigh two and a half kilograms? Now, one thing you have to remember is if the sheets should be, the sheet of papers only should be same. Units should be same. So, if number of sheets and weight, I will make two columns, number of sheet and weight. Then I will take x1 as 12 and x2, I don't know how many sheets. I'm not asked. I'm asked how many sheets of the same paper would weigh two and a half kilograms. Here it is in grams, here it is in kilograms. So we will convert this two and a half kilograms into grams. So Y1 is equal to 40 grams. We have already written weight in grams. So you can just write 40. And Y2 is equal to 2500 grams. X2 we don't know so we will write it as X. Now here when the sheet of paper increases. So here it is when the weight increases naturally the number of sheet of paper would also be more. Here it is 12 then the weight is 40. And here if the weight was more 2500 that means more number of papers. Yes. So the values are increasing. When value of X is increasing value of Y is also increasing. When both x and y are increasing then it is a direct proportion. So more the number of sheets more would be the weight and so it is in direct proportion. If one value was increasing and other was decreasing then it would have been in direct proportion which we will come later on. But when both the values are increasing then we say that it is in direct proportion. So we always write down the formula x1 upon y1 is equal to x2 upon y2. And we substitute the value of all these x1, y1. So x1 is 12 and y1 is 40. So 12 upon 40 is equal to x upon 2500. 
I take this 2500 on the other side and let x remain on one side. So I write down x is equal to 12 into 2500. This 2500 is in denominator. When it goes on the other side, it will be multiplied with 12. So 12 into 2500 upon 40. 0, 0 cancel and it will be 4 ones are and 4 threes are and you get x is equal to 750. Thus the number of sheet is equal to 750. You will perform it in this manner. Whatever the problem sum is given, make the columns, write down the values x1, y, x2, y1, y2 and then think if x is increasing, y should also be increasing and then it is in direct proportion. Let's take one more example. A train is moving at a uniform speed of 75 kilometers per hour. Now two questions are asked. How far will it travel in 20 minutes? And find the time required to cover a distance of 250 kilometers. So here the distance traveled and the time taken. So first I will write down as there are three values because there are one is what is given then another is there are two questions so there will be three values x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, y3. The first one given is 75 kilometers per hour. That means in one hour the train is traveling a distance of 75 kilometers. So here I will write down x1 is equal to 75 and y1 is equal to 1 hour, 1 hour that is equal to 60 minutes because everything is given in minutes. After that x2 we don't know because the first question is how far will it travel in 20 minutes. So we are given y2, y2 is 20 minutes so x2 will be x. Now first I will take this two only. I will compare these two only. So here the distance, here the time taken is decreasing. So naturally the distance traveled will also decrease. So here the distance increases, time increases and if distance decreases, time also decreases. So here if the distance is increasing, time will increase and if the distance decreases, time also decreases. Thus it is in direct proportion. So both are given. The next question is find the time required to cover a distance of 250 kilometers. Instead of 75, the distance has increased to 250. Then naturally the time taken will also increase. But first we will take these two. So we will write down x1 upon y1 is equal to x2 upon y2. x1 is given to be 75 and y1 is 60 which is equal to x we don't know upon x2 is x and y2 is 20 minutes. So this 20 I take it on the other side so I get 75 into 20 upon 60 which is equal to x. 0 and 0 cancel 2 1s are 2 3s are 3 1s are and 3 25s are. So x is equal to 25 kilometers. So train will travel 25 kilometers in 20 minutes. Now our next part. Again now we will take these two part. That is x2 upon x3 is equal to y2 upon y3. Because whenever they are in direct proportion x1 upon y1 is equal to x2 upon y2 is equal to x3 upon y3. Remember that always. So here also we will take the last two part. x2 upon x3 is equal to y2 upon y3. So here I will write x2 upon y2 is equal to x3 upon y3. So x2 is what? x. We already found out x which is 25 kilometers. So I will write 25 y2 is 20 and x3 is 250, y3 I don't know so I will write it as y. Now I bring y here and this whole thing I take it on the other side. When I take 25 upon 20 on the other side it will be inversed. So y is equal to y I am taking it here. Here it is in denominator when it goes on the left hand side it will be in the numerator. 
excuse me so y is equal to 250 into 20 upon 25 this will be inversed when it goes on the other side 25 ones are and 25 tens are so 10 into 20 is 200 and it is minutes because y it is the unit is minutes so y is equal to 200 minutes you can leave it as it is and if you want to convert it into hours you divide by 60 so 0 and 0 cancel when you divide 20 by 6 you get 3 hours 20 minutes because 20 will be the remainder and you will get <coughs> 3 hours 20 minutes excuse me so thus to travel 250 kilometers train will have to take 200 minutes train will take 200 minutes or 3 hours and 20 minutes. So this was the introduction part of your chapter direct and inverse proportion. Now we will start with exercise in our next part.